So um, it's strongly thought that the Vitruvian figure, which is this human figure inside the, <coughs> inside the circle, is actually Greek. It's not. It's Arabic. Um, and it's called a Nisbel Fadile. Um, and the measurement of these letters are based on this Nisbel Fadile. And if you look at this figure, this is the Elif in Arabic, which is the simplest letter, which is just a straightforward line. Um, the dots that you can see are the measurement of these letters. So each letter is measured by the dots of the pen that's producing these letters. So if you look at the elif, it's um, seven dots high, and the head of the elif, which is the red part, is a dot and a half. And ironically, this is the same proportions for the human body. You can see the seven uh, letters and a point and a half for the head. Um, and if you look at the human figure, it's exactly the same. The, the human head is a part and a half of the whole human body. So, and even all letters, actually, although they're perceived to be straight or horizontal or vertical, they're not. They have these musical waves, which, um, just like the human body, and you could always see the human body, although it's straight, but it has the curves, it has the chest, it has the lower part, and so is letters. Um, the tools that are used in Arabic calligraphy um, are very simple, as you can see them. There are reed pens, there are wooden pens, <coughs> wooden pens, and they're very simple. Uh, the ink is made out of um, carbon powder boiled with honey, and the reason for the honey is to glue the carbon paper to the pa uh, carbon powder to the paper when the um, uh, water evaporates. This makes calligraphy very challenging because you only have black and white. In painting, if you make any mistake, you could revise it with colors, or revise it or edit it with shades and shadows. In calligraphy, you cannot do that. Um, this is starting a piece of calligraphy from a sketch. So this is only a sketch, and you can see the uh, pencil lines done in... Uh, can you see, actually, the pencil lines? Um, this says um, a line that, of calligraphy which says which is a reminder of um, um, God's perfection and how everything comes in a certain way, a certain maqdar, um, basically, a certain um, amount. Um, now, we start with sketching the letters just to put the musical note together, um, just to measure up the relation of the words. Um, if you see here, it's just pencil lines that are putting the, le <coughs> the letters together to compose a calligraphy line. Um, then we start with the ink. This is, remember, this is a sketch, not a piece of art or a loha, which we'll see in due course. Um, so when, once we start with the um, ink, um, putting the letters together, um, seeing the relationships together, ensuring that they actually are readable so that the eye, once it picks up the first letter, it moves on to the second and the third and so on. And you can see the beauty of the Arabic letters is that each word or the end of each word carries the next word so that the eye is assisted um, by the letter. So once it finishes a letter, then the next letter comes in to the eye. Um, and that makes the whole process of reading simpler to the eye. Um, this is nearly the line completed in, in ink, um, and you can see the shapes of the letters are starting to take together. Um, and you can see the mass of the line um, is starting to look like a musical note, really. Um, then we move on to the, uh, this is me actually even uh, inking my own hand and messing it up, which I've wiped up with a cotton bun. Um, then we start putting the umlauts, which is the embellishments, which are the lammas and the fathas, the assisting elements to the calligraphy to be read. Um, and you can see they all gel together with the whole mass of calligraphy, um, so that it's all one composition. It's all one mass, uh, balance and, um, and harmonizing with each other so that the eye enjoy reading it. Um, this is now um, measuring up the units of the letters and ensuring that the relationships of them are correct and the proportions of them are correct. You can see the red dots are actually the weight of each letter. So each letter has a height, a width, um, a, a certain degree of, um, of um, bend and so on. So 
Um, this is the line being weighed with the red dots to ensure that whether you enlarge it or reduce it in size, it keeps the same, um, the same proportion, just like a human body. Um, if you compress the human, the human body, it will actually look distorted. If you stretch it, it will look too long. So same with letters. Um, this is now the sketch of the calligraphy being done with the signature, and that will be then transformed into a piece of calligraphy. And this is the line that you've just seen constructed from, um, from the pencil line to it being a calligraphy line. Um, there is another way which is starting with the weight of the letters, which, is, which means you start with the actual weight of the letters and the setting out and then putting the letters together. This is a line of, or a construction of the ayah where you said, Biharrabi bihamdi. And you can see again the um, pencil lines put together to put the, composer, the composition in, a, um, in an oval shape. And then we start the weight of the letter. So instead of, instead of putting the human body or its part, we put its weight against it so the body would look actually like a human body. And you can see the construction of each letter and the setting out of it is very complex. And each letter has a connection to 28 other letters. And these 28 other letters vary in shapes and in connections depending on what's before it and what's after it. So what you see now is the actual construction of the letter rather than the letter itself. So we're actually um, trying to um, abstract the letter to its, um, to its initial shapes and weights before coming up with the letter. Now the letters are coming, starting to come in. Um, and you can see the wow has a width of two dots, a height of two dots, its head, the measurement of the um, how they call it, which is the lower side of it, has four dots and so on. So each letter sits in exactly with its setting out, sits in exactly with its dots. Um, and you can see that's the beauty of the proportion of the letters. And now the letters are starting to fit in. It's like the bones being filled with, or like God says, we created the bones and then we, we filled up the bones with meat and so on. And that's the same process um, inspired by God's creation for the letters. Um, going on with the construction, you can see the black part is the actual letters and the yellow part is their setting out and their weight and their architecture. Um, until reaching to the full construction, and you can see now that there are parts um, that needs filling with the embellishment, so to ease up the reading of this um, letter or this um, phrase or this ayah. Um, you can also see how the balancing factors of the letters, they come in with the little embellishments, the weight of the embellishments in relation to the letters. Um, now that the construction is starting to get filled up, you can see that that could be turned from a, a piece of a sketch of letters into a, a piece of what could be perceived as a calligraphy. So now this is the construction of the <laughs> units, of the brick units that have built the wall. The wall sorry. Um, now we want to fill it up with the finishes, the colors, and the rest of it. Um, so I'm going to show you how the calligraphy piece starts from the sketch ending up with the lawha, which has the golden um, illumination around it, which, which, which is basically what we see in the Quran, in the Quranic page. Um, this is a construction, a sketch being constructed, and this is a piece of um, poetry by a poet called Al Hallaj from Baghdad. And the line says, Ya kulli 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 lam ta kulli um, And as you can see, it's already confusing with words. So this is how you fill it up from it being uh, uh, just letters, random letters until it's being put together in a composition that could please the eye, really. Um, this is going through another um, trial of construction, just to see how those letters could fit together. Um, and from an oval shape, to a circular shape, to a thick shape, um, to all those shapes. Our modern architecture cannot accept... Yes, thank you very much. Our modern <coughs> architecture cannot accept um, um, traditional elements like 
um, calligraphy, Islamic illumination. Um, so <clears throat> we were invited to design a building, which is actually a mosque. And we always perceived the mosque to be the minaret, to have um, this uh, cylindrical element. Um, and it's vertical. And that was for a simple reason, for the muazzin to go up it and call for prayers. Nowadays, we have microphones fixed up it and people could go up, um, uh, so people don't need to go up anymore. Same with the, um, with the dome, and it's a structural element to uh, reduce the, the columns so that people could stand in lines and pray. When we got invited to design this mosque, uh, I thought the, the minaret could actually not necessarily be this cylindrical vertical element. It could instead be a reminder to the sky and to God. So we use this slab that's pointing to God. The, the dome itself could be actually inverted because we can create now modern structures and we have put on the dome the verse um, uh, in the Ladina, uh, Ladina uh, sorry, in the Ladina, Saluna al Nabi, in the Law of Malakati, Saluna al Nabi, Ladina Am, Salu Ali, or Salimu Taslima. Uh, which actually reflects light and filters light through the musalla. Um, and you can see um, the walls, the vertical walls, because we have a harsh environment of very aggressive sun, uh, we thought we'd actually carve the walls in calligraphy so that this calligraphy would filter light and create a new rhythm um, that goes into inside the, um, inside the mosque, which is those letters of of Quran, and you can see them on the walls. Um, and we concluded with a very interesting fact that those are actually not only working as an aesthetic element, these are not only beautiful, but they actually reduce the, the strong aggressive sunlight that we have in the Middle East to the inside of the space. Um, and that worked as an environmental element as well as the architectural element or the aesthetic. Um, and you can see also, that the use of modern elements, such elements such as glass, steel, whatever you, you have, um, is actually not does not intersect with our Islamic traditional architecture. Um, this is the inside of the musalla, and you can see how this beautiful um, slab of minaret takes you up to the sky. And at night, you can see the light that's inside the mosque shining out through the words of God. Um, and you can see how they illuminate um, the words of God to the outside. This is the night view of the mosque. Um, I've had another little project by, I think we're all tired and we, you've heard a lot, so I'm gonna move on. And thank you very much for listening and I hope this would be a reminder to move on with modern architecture. Thank you. <laughs>